person. Uh, how's your retro day? Getting a lot of space helmet representation down front, or increasing space helmet representation. Two. Okay, fine, but that's two more than you usually see in a live show. Not that retro appearance. I suppose that's true. Oh, don't look at the bottom. Oh, okay. There we go. Uh, I'm going to jump right into it. This is a full show tonight. It's time for morning announcements. Good morning, students. Uh, the uh, uh, shipwide chess match gold team has won four games. Red team has won five. You got, you got one more day in hand and some change to uh, make up some ground and take this thing home, y'all. Still have the slow walk you. Make sure they make their moves. Yeah, that's right. Uh, let's see. Onboard booking for Joko Cruise 2024 does end tomorrow morning. So you can uh, get forms if you don't have them already at the, uh, is it the onboard booking desk or the info desk or both? In that area. Yes, in the atrium. <laughs> and we'll look for some forms. Uh, and then you can turn those in uh, at in that area as well. And uh, you can also look for the Bookie Monster uh, on our booking drop-off box that is secured and adorable in that order. Exactly. Gene, you did a great job. Uh, let's see. Yeah, for those of you who either have taken games from the game library or have lent games to the games library, you need to return slash pick those games up by 3 p.m. tomorrow. Thank you for your cooperation with that. One more reminder, uh, masking policy is masking is required indoors. We thank you for cooperating for the uh, safety and security of all of our attendees. If you do not have a mask, I know it's late in the week, there are masks available at the uh, assisted listening device table right up there at the top of deck too. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we have a last minute addition. It's not even on sched yet. We will get it there, but a lot of people have been asking uh, if the... Um, the folks who put together the escape room would be interested in doing some office hours. They'll be doing those at 4 p.m. tomorrow in the loft. Uh, how many people got a chance to participate in the escape room? I know it was pretty busy, but it was pretty awesome. We've heard nothing but awesome things about it. So thanks to them for that, and thank you all for taking advantage of it. Uh, and that ends our morning announcements. All right. Thanks for doing that. Tonight's show is pretty jam-packed. A little later on, we're going to have our improv group. How many people were at the first late night improv show? They'll be coming back out. Uh, but first, I, I know the, the schedule more or less said TBA. Well, it's time to A. Uh, our first segment for tonight, one of my favorites, Worst First Page. If, uh, if we can have our worst first page authors, if they are at the ready, Sarah Marshall, Josh Donnellan, Jennifer Hutchinson, and Meg Elison. <laughs> For those of you new to the cruise or unfamiliar with this concept, it's pretty simple. We have asked a number of different writers to write the a terrible opening page to an awful book or project that does not actually exist. Uh, it could be in their own voice, another author's voice, or a made-up author's voice, any genre. I look forward to the terribleness we are about to face. Will you please welcome our first, worst first page, Sarah Marshall. Break. 
Across Fort Lauderdale, Special Agent Steele of Justice tends to see approach the barista. Life had been so simple before he started the Golden Eyeball Mission, but since he lapsed into his coma, only to be revived eight years later by his supple young colleague, Lacey Justice, no relation. <laughs> Things had become, well, different. It began when they asked what kind of milk you wanted, and before you knew it, they were asking for your pronouns. <laughs> Suddenly, he collided with his colleague, Lacey Justice, no relation. Her sparkling blonde hair came down to her breasts, and her sparkling blonde breasts came down to her legs. <laughs> not uh, much of a parody of what guys actually know in multiple classes. <laughs> and her legs went right down to the dark heart of humanity where the serial killers live. <laughs> Together, they had already caught the enchanted tiki room killer, the comedy cruise ship killer, and the TED Talk ripper. <laughs> but Steele sensed their greatest challenge lay just ahead. Steel, Lacey said, her breasts heaving with professionalism. <laughs> Have we talked about diversity, equity, and inclusion? And my, my diversity, equity, and inclusion task force within the police psychic unit. Um, speaking of psychic powers, look at this towel that magically appeared. <laughs> Steel of Justice is a strong man, Steel of Justice said. Strong enough to wrestle a volcano or jump into an alligator. But can he follow the woman he loves into the final frontier? I wish you wouldn't talk about yourself in the third person, said Lacey. Which person, said Steel. And there's another thing, said Lacey. I want you to follow the person you love into the final frontier. We've taken on a lot of villains, but are we ready to attack the gender binary himself? <laughs> Will you buy it? Somehow I knew you would take to this challenge. <laughs> All right, that's some wonderful opening awfulness. Will you please welcome our next author, Josh Gondelman. Yeah! Hello again, Joe Cruz 2023. Before I start reading, I have a message to relay from friend of the cruise, Jean Gray. Jean says, tell everyone I miss them and that they still shouldn't draw sunglasses on the side. I don't know if that's as binding as the googly eyes thing, but I was asked to relay the message and you all seem to know what it means. Okay, so a little caveat uh, again before I get into the thing. Uh, I wrote this I wrote this that I'm going to read yesterday, and I had a different idea last night that I was going to write today, but then I spent the afternoon uh, guessing whether I was seasick or hungover, and I was both. So yeah, so... Which, Oh, drunk or boat, drunk or boat, sure, yeah. Bingo! Bingo, yep. Okay, look, I'm going to say most of the words <laughs> for this next part <laughs> because I'm easily distracted. So, what you won't be hearing from me is the first page of my gritty reboot of the Red Wall series in the style of Deadpool, which was either going to be called Red Pool or Dead Wall, I haven't decided yet. <laughs> I'm just trying to get a jump on when Brian and Jock enters the public domain, but it was not to be. Okay, so here's the real thing. So, Taffy brought us Sarah Ackner's book, Flesh is in Trouble. Uh, it was a huge bestseller, great book, adapted for FX, and it's nominated for all sorts of awards. Right? You all have heard of it, yes. Yeah. The, the series stars Claire Danes and Lizzie Kaplan, who are wonderful, and of course, Jesse Eisenberg, who's most relevant to this discussion, uh, because I think we can all agree he is kind of a Josh Gondelman type, I would say. <laughs> the character is a neurotic Jew living in New York, worried about aging and masculinity, and it's like, hello, I'm right here. Uh, I think this could have really been a huge break for me as an actor. Nothing against Jesse Eisenberg, one of my favorite performers on screen, but I'm ready for my star turn. So I started writing my own book, 
that's going to be adapted in the vein of Fleshman. But in my book, the main character is so precisely based on me that uh, the novel is going to be beloved. That's the first thing. And then if they tried to cast anyone who isn't me, the fans would revolt. Um, so this is the first page. Without further ado, I bring to you page one of my upcoming novel, Gondelman is in Peril. <laughs> George Gondelman, I can't <laughs> chill at all, I can't chill at all. So there's a little blurriness. Uh, put his head down on his desk. He had just canceled a work meeting, citing a feeling of vertigo stemming from his acute and ever-present awareness of the Holocaust. <laughs> but in reality, he was probably just hungry. <laughs> the cool oak felt soothing against Gondelman's abundant forehead. <laughs> He tried not to think of himself as having a terrible head of hair, but rather a dazzling head of head. <laughs> a, a largely unadorned carrying case for his clever but otherwise not especially powerful brain. A brain that spent an inordinate portion of its energy upset that even pretty nice hotels seldom splurge for upmarket toilet paper. <laughs> A brain that often declined invitations to friends' weddings for unclear reasons, but would rarely turn down the opportunity to accept sushi of dubious provenance. <laughs> including sometimes on a boat. <laughs> As Gondolin sat up, his soft midsection butted up against the desk. For no particular reason, he thought to himself that if someone were to make a movie or TV series about his life, it would be important that no one too conventionally sexy be cast to portray him. <laughs> No one with six-pack abs or an impressive beard or even especially good posture, he thought. <laughs> Honestly, he considered idly, it would be a mistake to cast someone who is too seasoned or talented as a performer in the role. It would take away from the relatable everyman quality he's convinced he has, despite being a weird little Jew whose thin, reedy voice leaves new acquaintances mystified about his sexuality. <laughs> Yes, a kind of sloppy, effortful performer would be best to capture Gondelman's essence. He himself was, as his late step-grandmother once told him, more of a writer than an actor anyway. It was a well-intentioned comment, and yet, 20 years later, he couldn't help thinking about it, and even recounting it for strangers. It was, humiliatingly, his primary memory of this lovely woman who had otherwise shown him nothing but kindness. It was thoughts like these that would make Gondelman such a flawed but compelling protagonist. <laughs> Gondelman blinked, shook his head. How much time has he wasted on these humiliating ambitions? Why would anyone make a movie or TV series about his life? Unless. <laughs> Two things were clear to him, though. One, he had gotten himself into the kind of sexy, neurotic entanglement that people win Emmys for portraying on screen. <laughs> and two, in the unlikely event that it came up, he would show his bare ass on premium cable or a top-tier streaming service. <laughs> Please welcome Jennifer Hutchison. And to help, which you'll understand in a minute, Josh Gondelman and Mark Evan Jackson. There was a question about the microphone, so yay. Uh, hi, I'm Jennifer Hutchison. Um, I am a screenwriter, primarily living in television, so when Paul said, hey, you want to write a worst first page, I said, can I write like a scene, please? Because um, that's really where my bumper bubble is. So instead of worst first page, we're doing a worst first scene. And it's a lot of a gentleman have stepped up to help. Uh, so here we go. Uh, the first scene of sci-fi masterpiece, uh, Infinity Vortex, segment four. <laughs> Exterior space, the void. Day, night, time doesn't exist here. We're wide on the inky blackness of space, darker than the deepest pits of the mines of Braxis III. Where is that? I don't know, man, I made it up. That's how this works. <laughs> darker than that special black that one guy patented and won't let anyone use without paying for the note. Thank you, thank you. Uh, darker 
than your seventh grade homeroom teacher's soul. <laughs> Maybe just mine. Uh, there aren't even stars out here. There should be stars though, right? Uh, no, hell yeah, there should be stars. But we'll get to that and to the bastards who stole them. <laughs> Suddenly, a blinding flash of light rips through the black, carrying a gaping wound across the void with a shriek. Barely visible inside the blinding light is a silhouette of something, something hurtling towards us, hurtling fast, closer and closer until we can make out what it is. It's a ship, a spaceship. <laughs> it's beach of shit. No shiny utopia jumpsuit bullshit here. This thing's been to the farthest reaches of the galaxy and back, a journey written all over its hull, in dense scorch marks, and strange and likely pornographic alien graffiti. <laughs> as soon as it's out, the tear in space collapses with a whoosh. Our lonely ship, now a lone spot of tarnished silver in the vast, lonely, velvet blanket of empty space. Smash 2. Interior, SS Argonauti Spank Wilkinson, Commando. <laughs> Close on the scruffy, unshaven face of Breck Trevelyan. Think Tom Cruise, 28, 6 foot 5, and all muscle. A half sneer perpetually on his lips. His eyes scan the instrument panel before him as a single bead of sweat drips down his chiseled brow. Well, it appears we're still alive, little brother. Reveal. Hunched down in the seat next to Brett is his younger brother, Macton Trevelyan. Timothy Chalamet, 24, 6 foot 4, and lanky with a mischievous tilt to his chin. You sure? We did pass through a bright light. You know as well as I do what Dad always said, little bro. The last thing you feel before you die is the frigid crunch of Dad's eight finger grip tightening round your neck as his other hand gently strokes your back to comfort you as you drift from this mortal plane to the unknowable land. To the yeah, unknowable. I know, that's it. <laughs> of course I remember. You repeated it to us every night before bed, as you know. Uh, the brothers smile, but then the smiles are replaced by sadness. Macton wipes away a single tear. I can't believe it's been ten years, big brother. Ten years since Dad died and left us with this ship. We're taking real good care of Pops, I promise. That's why we're here, little brother. To make sure it doesn't get to eleven. Damn straight, big brother. I just wish Bob and Polly was still here. To be there when we entered the Infinity Vortex and bring Dad back. Back from the dead. You know as well as I do that our own sister knew when she went down into the abyss of Carpathics to retrieve the Navalian navigation crystals, there was no coming back. Matthew shakes his head, suddenly angry. And you didn't stop her, big brother! You were supposed to protect her! Her and Mom! Don't you think I know that?! <laughs> the sight of Polly's face swallowed up in those a thousand hungry maws tortures me every single day, little brother. And don't you know how often I wish it was me and not Mom, who that 12 horned Galatorian ram gored right through the heart? Every goddamn minute of every goddamn day, little brother. I know, I know, big bro, and I'm sorry. A long beat of silence. Longer. Even longer. Until... Let's just focus on bringing back Dad. Before the vortex closes and the Collector Collector finishes snapping up every single star in the universe. Before they get to Earth. And steal our son. Brex is back at the control panel, his fingers flying over the old school interface. Think alien, none of that futuristic Avastor shit. <laughs> it beats once, twice, three times as the green glow of a pulsing circular mass resolves at the center of the display. Yeah, baby. There she is. The Vortex? Seriously? Just where the Council of Three said it would be. We did it, big brother! The brothers embrace, looking upwards. <laughs> Almost there, Pops. Suddenly, the instrument panel goes haywire as alarm sounds. Oh, I get a not so good feeling about this. <laughs> Brad, fingers flying over the controls. No, 
No, it can't be. We miscalculated the threshold parameters of the last time tear. It's thrown us, of course. I knew it was too good to be true. How far, of course? Brett looks down, not wanting to say it. How far off course? I'm so sorry, little brother. How far off course, big brother? Where are we? Not where, little brother. <laughs> Some pages are longer than others. <laughs> there was a scroll, so it counted. Please welcome our final worst first page author for the evening, Meg Elison. Stupid people 
Will you please welcome our first Fetty Content Talker, the stupid Travis McElroy. Hi everybody, I only have five minutes and I can talk for hours about this, so I'm going to jump right in. Um, who here knows about fan theories? Okay, pretend like, pretend like none of you do. Who here knows about fan theories? Oh yeah, okay, great. So let me tell you about fan theories. There are, what a fan theory is, is the idea of something that's not explicitly stated in a show, or movie, or book, or whatever, and fans theorize about it, that's where it gets the name. Yeah, yeah thank you. I'm glad you guys are all with me. Please pay attention, I didn't write this down. So, in my book, there are two kinds of fan theories. There are the subtextual and the hypertextual. And a hypertextual fan theory is not necessarily supported by anything said or written, but rather that when you line up events, facts, whatever, you're like, this makes sense, so much sense in fact that I choose to believe it. For example, uh, when Frozen came out, there were people who said, um, what if Elsa and Anna's parents are also Tarzan's parents and the shipwreck is them being shipwrecked on the island, it makes complete sense, right? And then subtextual is like, oh, you know what, they mentioned this, they said this thing, and it's kind of in there, so what if this was true, right? My favorite example of this, also from Frozen, is uh, there's a fan theory that the trolls make Hans bad, yes. and that he has not been bad the whole time, but during Fixer Upper, where they say, get the fiance out of the way, and the whole thing will be fixed, and then the next time you see Hans, he turns, right? But what I want to talk about is uh, neither of those two, hypertextual or subtextual, but rather a fan theory is just so true that they just haven't written it yet. <laughs> And that is that Olaf is a Horcrux. <laughs> and this is my fantasy. And I'm not even joking when I say how true it is, because I have two daughters, six and three, and so I have watched every Frozen thing multiple times. Yeah, I mean Frozen 1, Frozen 2. I also mean like Frozen Fever, Frozen A Lost Adventure. I also mean Lego Frozen. I mean every Frozen thing. And Olaf contains a part of Elsa's soul. It's just true. <laughs> Olaf, okay. <laughs> Olaf is created during Letting Go. What she's letting go of is her hope of a normal life normal, and a close relationship with her sister, right? So then, whoosh, she creates Olaf during Let It Go, and then what does Olaf do? Well, he wants to be friends with everyone, and he's immediately drawn to Anna, and he remembers his name. He remembers he likes warm hugs, just like the game they played, but that's not all. That's not all. In Let Go Frozen, when the Aurora Borealis happens, <laughs> Olaf says, the sky is awake, Anna. Do you remember? But she didn't say that to Olaf. She said, fucking Elsa. <laughs> oh! Olaf contains Elsa's memories. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah! In Frozen 2, when Elsa, let's say it, dies, Olaf, guys, it's the magic, is it? Is it the fucking magic? Or is it that? It's part of her soul and that's why she comes back. Because she pulls that part of the soul out of Olaf and it brings her back. And then she's able to recreate Olaf. What? You all just went silent because I'm fucking right. truth bombs. Our next speaker was supposed to be Mark Evan Jackson, 
but he has already been on stage once tonight, and also he mispronounced my name. So screw that. So please welcome our next speaker, Paul Sport. Alright, get it out and then fucking stop. You got a bunch of red team like people. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that got your attention, huh? Alright, we got some stuff to go through. This is important, so. Uh, okay. Shh. Genius. Vision. The ability to perfectly encapsulate complex thoughts and emotions and express them concisely through art without the use of language. So many of us strive for it, few achieve it. Those who do are born with the ability, and the rest of us can merely watch from a distance and admire. Perhaps learn something? Who can say? I want to talk to you tonight about the greatest moment in 1970s rock music history. To do that, I need to talk to you about the Eagles song, Hotel California. To do that, I need to talk to you about the Eagles album, Hotel California. And to do that, I need to talk to you about the Eagles. The Eagles technically just Eagles, but universally referred to with the definite article, are an American rock band formed in California in 1971. They were one of the most successful music acts of the 70s. And in their most prominent years, between their debut album Eagles in 1972 and their breakup eight years later following their 1979 album The Long Run, they had five number one singles, six number one albums, won six Grammy Awards, and five American Music Awards. The 1976 album of their greatest hits, 1971 to 1975, still holds the record for the best-selling album of all time in the United States at 38 million copies and counting. Worldwide, as of 2020, the album sold over 45 million copies, making it the world's best-selling greatest hits album and third best-selling album of all time. The band's sound, influenced by rhythm, blues, soul, bluegrass, and rock bands such as The Birds and Buffalo Springfield, exemplifies what came to be known as California Rock. <laughs> a softer-edged rock and roll variant, tinged with elements of country music and even some folk. The band members also became entwined with, entwined with and influenced by the community of musicians who lived and gathered in the Laurel Canyon area of Los Angeles at the time, including such luminaries as Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, Joni Mitchell, Jackson Brown, Linda Ronstadt, and Harry Nielsen. In early 1976, the lineup at the time, Glenn Fry, Don Felder, Randy Meissner, Don Henley, and newest edition Joe Walsh, began recording their fifth studio album. Between March and October of that year, they laid down a collection of songs that drifted further from their original, much stronger country music roots and toward a harder, more electrified rock sound. The album evolved into somewhat of a concept album, shot through with themes of loss of innocence, the cost of naivete, and the band's own relationship with the perils of fame and excess. <laughs> This was reflected in tracks such as Victim of Love, The Last Resort, Wasted Time, and Life in the Fast Lane. On December 8th, 1976, the completed album, Hotel California, was released. Its themes of weary sadness and weary bitterness were best encapsulated on side one, track one, the album's title song. It was released as the album's second single, and at six minutes, 30 seconds long, it was a risky release being far longer than songs most radio stations at the time generally played. But the song's length works to its advantage, taking its time to set the scene, beginning starkly with bass and ethereal 12-string guitar. Henley's lead 
vocal and drums kick in to introduce a stark desert setting and a mysterious hotel, both literal and metaphorical. The chorus features guitar riffs from Joe Walsh and the band's signature vocal harmonies. towards a claustrophobic, foreboding climax, describing a horror film-like inability to escape the hotel, and by extension, one's own tragic circumstances. The song launches into what is inarguably its most memorable feature, dueling guitar solos by Don Felder and Joe Walsh. Thus...
to listen. Please welcome to the stage our final Fake Tech Talk presenter, Jonathan Coles. Because I thought, 
you know, well now it's like, it's like showing up the party and wearing the same dress as somebody else. It's embarrassing. You know, and I was trying to be very self-conscious that you were going to think that I didn't have my own original ideas. But quite honestly, as this talk has gone on, I am becoming increasingly angry, and I'm starting to wonder some things. You know, Paul is aware of my work. <laughs> You know, he knows I'm there. I mean, uh, is he aware of my interest in three guitar solo drum fills uh, from rock songs of the mid to late 1970s? I think he probably is. <laughs> and I'm not accusing anybody of anything. I'm not going to accuse anybody of anything. I'm really just asking a couple of questions here. <laughs> is it possible that Paul Ugh. Saw my talk at another uh, another uh, event. Uh, is it possible that Paul rigged the lineup so that I would go after him so that he would scoop me instead of me scooping him? And again, this is just a question. Is it possible that Paul stole my ideas? Again, we're just asking questions here. Is he aware that I have an album called Some Guys? which is a collection of covers of 70s rock songs. <laughs> that sound exactly like the originals. Is he aware that on that album I did a cover of the song New Kid in Town by the Eagles? Technically just Eagles? He is now, motherfuckers. <laughs> slide for a second. I have one more slide to show uh, for this. Um, unfortunately, uh, one of our performers, Annie Savage, is not feeling well and will not be able to be here tonight, but we wish her the absolute best and we give her the greatest of awes followed by applause right now. <laughs> we love her to death. Uh, those of you who are at the show know that they were trying to come up with the worst possible name for an improv group, which is saying something, given the, the improv groups that are out there. Uh, and we think we finally came up with it, uh, credit Janet Barney, for the work that we now like to present, Joke Co. Cruz. Please welcome to the stage, Mark Evan Jackson. show of our lives. We will, if you at any point feel that we are not doing the best show of our lives, I need you to run up here and let me know on stage. Yeah, okay, go ahead. You are going to be so sorry. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, to begin, all we need is a suggestion from you. Maybe you please have a suggestion of, uh, uh, what was your favorite subject in school? Art! I heard art. Hey, Art. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> What's going on, buddy? Well, I've just been noticing you've been studying me lately. The way I gently opened my locker or I scrolled down the hallway. Can you blame me, buddy? You got an outstanding gait. You got you taught me that secret handshake that I'm still trying to learn. I mean, yeah, I'm studying you. I would be like you. Yeah, I understand, but I have a grading system, and I'm not sure that you fit right on my grading system as a student of all. Okay, uh, I didn't know this worked both ways. I'm so sorry. Uh, what should I be trying to give you back as a student, as, a, as an apprentice, if you will? Hold on just a second. Daddy, she want to know what she should be giving me back as a student or as a princess, as you will. Oh, well, we're going to tell her 
Oh, you should be giving you apples. We like apples. <laughs> apples. We like apples. <laughs> hey, uh, I, can I bring you some tomorrow? I didn't. I didn't bring any apples. I feel so, <laughs> I feel so silly. I should have been more prepared. Fail her. Fail her. She fails. <laughs> Fail. You give her an ass right now. I can hear that. Oh yeah, my dad is standing right behind you. <laughs> Uh, may we please have, uh, when you were back ashore before you came aboard, uh, aside from your keys or your phone, what's the last thing that you lost that you were looking for? Beard oil. Beard oil. Beard oil. Spirit oil. Beard. Beard oil. Beard oil. I also like spirit beard oil. oil. <laughs> if you have any questions, please do let me know. Okay, so just trying to see if uh, this beard is looking juicy enough, you know? <laughs> I have a little dryness, and I, I want my, my beard looking slick. Are you looking for truth or compliments? <laughs> a little bit of both. All right, it looks fine. <laughs> what can I do to make it look better? I'm glad you asked. We do have something of a selection. Ooh. We have tinctures, potions, drams, salves, pomades, oils. Wow. Are you the chosen one? <laughs> How do you know to heal it? It's just coming to me. I'm just trying everything. As it was foretold. <laughs> Three years later. <laughs> this is the oil that I need. Apply it, please, work may I? You, you may. <laughs> it was on that day that a regular man became a mightier man. They called him Sir Barb from that day on. Yeah, yeah, it's for... <laughs> Never will these be washed again. <laughs> Alright, let's get uh, just like a couple words that is an inside joke between purple you. Purple guava. iguana? Purple guava. Purple guava. Guava. Purple, purple guava. guava. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am, I'm at the super ring enjoying my suits. I'm just going to finish filling up my suits. Okay. Would you like some soups? I would love some soups. This oh. is a soup that my great grandfather invented many years ago. He was the first man to eat soup. He was the first man to eat soup? Mm -hmm. Before then, people just licked rocks. <laughs>
where do I start? <laughs> First of all, I want to say I'm not surprised you had to punch me in the stomach to get that, to be able to penetrate my stomach for, with that x-ray. This is a fierce soup, sir. Soup? It's a fierce, fierce soup. I'm not sure about that. It looks like you've been licking rocks. <laughs> Doctor, doctor, I'm sorry to bother you in the middle of your examination. There's a man out here who claims he hasn't washed his hands in 60 years. There he is. Man. I've touched the best beards and I won't wash it today. And you'd like me to do what? <laughs> oh, don't put it under a microscope. <laughs> Anything in their pocket right now? No, 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 don't lie to me, sir. If I come out there, you don't have ducks in your pocket. You have anything in your pocket? On your phone? Read me the first text on that phone. My default SMS is not here. Anyway, it's up there. Uh, yeah, but you do, do have a duck. I won't apologize. He did have a duck in his pocket. And thank you for calling me out on that. Even the ducks don't like me. The ducks love you, son. I'm eating everybody else's bread. Take me to the mall, um, and many malls. Who I, I 
I miss the mall. I feel like the cruise ship reminds me a bit of the mall. Yeah. And one thing that is missing from the cruise ship that reminds me of the mall is the kiosk. Yeah. I, knew, I had a, at one point in my life I had a crew of friends who all worked at kiosks. <laughs> like I miss that. Look, I down with capitalism. Down, down with it completely. But I would love to keep a kiosk or two. You know what I mean? <laughs> I love the like Russian doll of the kiosk at the mall. Like we have this giant thing of stores, and yet we have tiny, tiny little carts, tiny little carts of stores, like very specific bracelets and necklaces that you can't get at the ten other bracelets and necklaces stores. Also, where else are you going to get your cell phone fixed these days? <laughs> Gone far afield. Um, <laughs> what else did I love about my grandmother? Um, <laughs> taught me how to vacuum. <laughs> Look, you don't know that you're bad at vacuuming until you watch someone do good at vacuuming. You know what I mean? And then you're like, I've been doing this all wrong. It's supposed to look good afterwards? I didn't know that. Um, also, oh, she was a whipped cream connoisseur. Every night she made her own whipped cream from scratch. I knew somebody in this audience would be into that. You know what I mean? So there will be a panel tomorrow on whipped cream. It's going to be at 12 p.m. on um, yeah, she would make it every night, and uh, so much so that when she died, the one thing that I asked for of hers was the bowl that she mixed it in, because she used the same bowl, and it, <laughs> it became like misshapen from so all that whipping cream that she ate over her life. Um, I feel like that's some details. You guys oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Great. Thank you. Great. To the store, I stepped in the glass. You were barefoot? Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to do uh, the Flintstones diet where I try to go with my shoes. <laughs> yeah, oh, wow. Um, you can't feel that? That hurts me. Oh, yeah, no. So, so I think that the Flintstones thing is working because I've never seen Fred complain about stepping in glass. You know what I'm talking about? You know that's not a documentary, right? <laughs> okay. I haven't seen anything disprove it. <laughs> I stand corrected. You're yeah. standing. Isn't that... No, no, I'm, I'm good, you know? Oh. Okay, I... Oh, you, you, you're trying to take the glass out. Sorry. I mean... It's, it's deeper now. But... <laughs> I mean, yeah. I don't, if you're getting better traction, I... I... <laughs> You know, I, I feel like there's a part of me that's like, this shouldn't be in my feet. Well, yeah. But, you know, I'm feeling real jazzed up about it. You know, when I told you, you about my Flintstones plan, you're like, this is nuts. Don't right. do it. That's a bad idea. And, I don't know, I'm thinking I'm one. I mean, am I wrong? That bird still hasn't produced that one photograph. Yeah, well, we might. <laughs> We, we have to think back to Flintstones time. You know, you're, you're on those computers and internets, you expect everything to happen instantaneously. What? <laughs> I'm gonna take a glass out of your foot. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Holy cow. Yeah. Sir, what you brought to me is the rarest Hummo figurine. Where did you get this delicate piece of glass? My grandmother's foot. Your grandmother's foot. <laughs> Take this immediately to Cheryl Tunson. She'll know what to do with it. She'll know what to do with it. You don't follow me. I was backing away from it. She'll know what to do with it. She'll know what to do with it. Hello, I must be Cheryl Tunson. <laughs> yes? I thought I had gone to Antiques Roadshow, but I think it may have been the witch of some sort. <laughs> okay, well, is there a vitamin I can interest you in, or...? Oh, thank you. No, but uh, that, um, those sunglass keepers, 
Can you do this? Yeah. Is that all right? You can't actually go back oh, here. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I which getting... ones can I grab for you? Uh, all of them. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to violate your space. I was getting, getting a real kiosk vibe. <laughs> okay. Here you go. These are great. In the meantime, um, I was doing mild surgery on my grandmother's foot, as one does, and. Uh, is that. It's a. Uh, is that parking lot foot class? It is. Apparently, someone must have lost a humble figurine. What the F would I do with this? <laughs> I think I was given bad advice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, that's going to be $8.95 for the sunglass keepers. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, um, what are sunglass keepers? <laughs> you know, like the librarian strap? Oh, yeah, yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah. Of course. Please. Yeah. yeah. I just call them neck bangles. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. You are one of them. <laughs> I know it's your first day working here in the kiosk. Now they have that place over there that fixes broken iPhones. We break iPhones. <laughs> you know that you're a you're an ample sized man, so you could probably do a lot of damage with your own fist. Oh yeah. Here I have a dinky little hammer that I got from the dinky hammer kiosk over there. <laughs> you may want to try to click 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 a piece of that glass, see if that works for you or not. <laughs> You feel comfortable with that, or would you like to try some other items? I think my fists work fine. All right. Yeah, I've been oh, up. Here comes your first cut. Hi, I'm on my lunch break. Uh, Loyal, 
lover that I've always been to you. Gently making love to you at night when you when you asked me to. Sweetheart. Smoke in the back of your neck. Sweetheart, they've already heard of that. Okay. <laughs> Pack your things, everyone. We're We're moving into the car. I my startup didn't pan out. Seems no one needs vacuuming lessons. <laughs> really? About which part? <laughs> I guess all of it. You know, yes. I just get a little excited. I, I put a new poster up in my room, you know? Oh. I got a, a bunch of stuff hidden under my mattress. I don't know where it's going to go in the car. What kind of stuff, son? Next question. <laughs> He takes after me. <laughs> so we're all, 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 we're all living in the same Cadillac. We're all living in a pile in the Cadillac. That's we're all right. living in the Cadillac. You shouldn't see us living in the Cadillac. Like, For the moment, the, the, Cadillac. the Cadillac is leased, so I won't have money for long. Fucking YouTube, you can learn to vacuum anywhere these days. <laughs> Your father, as, as good as he is at making love, and he hey, is, no. Okay. This is, this is so then I'll bad. skip to the next part. He only has one other true talent, and that is the art of vacuuming. And if his time has come, if he can no longer do what he is good at, then, then we have to do what he says. He is our family's rock. The kind of rock that you eat on when you're thinking you eat the soup. <laughs> you know, this is, this is hard on us, too. Linda Tessarosa said that she would invite me to say you Linda Hawkins. Tessarosa? Yes. You're still talking to Linda talking. Tessarosa? Yes, yes. We explicitly said we weren't sure if we were still going to let you do that. Hold, I remember. Hold on a second. Linda Tessarosa is not real. Linda She's oh. not real. Oh, it's, it's one of those. Yeah. Continue Ooh. as you do. He watched a YouTube video on how to have a fake a partner, a fake crush, a fake crush. A, oh. Yeah. She's so real. She's, she, she's, she's real. I didn't say she wasn't real. She just lives in Tasmania. She was going to fly all the way here for Sadie Hawkins to take the Sadie Hawkins at school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We talked to each other on Wednesday. And then you guys are going to be totally fine. Hey boys, Linda. Hey, how's it going? Oh, see, I see. I, look, I need to talk to you on speakerphone because no one in my family thinks you're real or lives in Tasmania. I understand. I don't even have a real phone. I have to use my thumb and pinky to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, that's 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 why. Well, uh, yeah, you know. Hey, so we're moving into a Cadillac. And Ooh, I don't know, yeah. front seat to back seat. Front seat to back seat. Uh, we're still distributing rooms, so okay. I'm not sure. Uh, but I was just wondering, you know, if you could just try and visit sooner so I can at least show my parents that you're real and that I'm not making you up. I will be there literally immediately. Literally immediately. Three years later. <laughs> what your address is? <laughs> That's so great. Anything comes to mind? Can I get another suggestion? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Loafers. 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 Okay, great. Um, <laughs> that works for me. Great. Um, so I, uh, I am a person, I was raised vegetarian my whole life. Um, never eat meat, not once. Uh, and I also went to a private school, so I had to dress up from the foot down. Um, cause we, <laughs> We had uniforms, but we had very specific rules for our uniforms. Um, and so there was the year, my third grade, that I really wanted to get penny loafers. Because everybody else had really nice penny loafers. Um, but because we were like strict vegetarians, they also didn't wear leather. Um, so I had to get penny loafers from Payless. <laughs> I like that that's funny enough. Um, <laughs> But I do just want to say, like, Payless is no more, and like the kiosk, I wish we could bring it back. Well, I mean, kiosks haven't gone away. Whatever. Anyway. 
I miss Payless and I miss elastic together pairs of shoes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> because that's I, that was my favorite part of trying on shoes is walking them around the store with only about a six inch bit of gear <laughs> to really test them out. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I had plastic loafers uh, for most of school. Um, no one else did. Just me, just this little weirdo with some plastic loafers. I did also <laughs> one time get cowboy boots from Bayless. Yeah! They were also plastic. <laughs> um, and it was because I was dressing up, oh my god, I'm forgetting everything because I was seasick today. What's the name of the sharpshooting woman from the Old West? <laughs> That's right. Um, I was like, I went, I was the only guy in an all-girls school, you understand. Yeah. <laughs> So when we had to be historical figures, I was like, I'll be the girl with the guns! <laughs> anyway, I thought that was funny to me. I did, yes. Um, I'm not familiar with this. These are they're paper mache. They're made out of either paper mache, yes, or some type of fruit roll-up. <laughs> no, nobody died to, uh, to make that shoe. People died making it, but no one died to make it. <laughs> Just let me know if you need anything. I'll be right over here eating my soup. <laughs> Hi, can I help you with anything? We work on commission. Oh, um, I think I've gotten kind of the gist. I see paper mache fruit roll up. Uh, these obviously are made out of, oh wow, yeah. found garbage? Mm -hmm. huh. When you say found, that makes it sound like someone just found it somewhere. It's locally sourced, okay. um, carefully curated garbage that we put together into a beautiful shoe almost. <laughs> Now, how are the insoles with the grass clipping? Uh, there are no insoles. There are no insoles. Oh. The grass. Yeah, okay. that's that's something that um, uh, we deemed unnecessary. Interesting. Okay. So it's just a shoe, and then nothing on the bottom. Okay. <laughs> no soles either. So you'll see the outer casing of a shoe. Oh, I understand. And then underneath, bare foot, perfect for stepping on glass, for example, or whatever else. You like to do the hobby. Um, uh, would you let him know that the sc store is going to the in five? We're, the store is going to be in five, four. Calculus. Read a lot. All right. So, 
See, now we're now I'm with you. You're gonna read your opponent because now I'm looking at you. Hold like this. on. I left earlier to have a vocal check. And I come back to, no, you stay too, sir. I come back to find another version of me teaching wrestling. Is this who you want to be? Damn. Yeah, that's right. Welcome to being me, my brother. <laughs> Wrong. 
What is denomination? What is his right? Oh, show us those feet. They don't have souls, so I get to feel all the glass. Like the Fred Flintstone model? Like the Fred Flintstone model. Yeah. That's cool. Let's take our shoes off and look at each other's feet. <laughs> that is our son. We are the Joe Co. Cruz and you're the winner of Mark Evan Jackson. If you want to play, Oh, that's the bag that somebody made.